You are now listening to Out of the Blank. blank, blank. Welcome to another episode of Out of the Blank Podcast. I'm here with Chad Echowitz. Hello, hello. Thank you for having me on. I'm very, very excited to be here. So the best part that we can both agree on is time zones suck, man. They, they're not the best. Yeah, yeah. I, uh, I would 100% agree with you. I think, you know, kudos for you for, for organizing this and actually, you know, getting up at one o'clock your time and 5.30 in the morning my time to do this. It's, it's damn impressive. I mean, that's commitment to a podcast if ever I've heard it. Well, hopefully it's going to be worth it because I can tell you something. Everybody's interesting in their own unique way. And Chad, you are interesting. And I'm going to find out what it is. Yeah, thank you. I, I, I'm, I'm sure, you know, you're 100% right. It's, it's amazing. We live in this wonderful, wonderful world with such unique characters. And yeah, like you say, everyone's unique in their own way. It's very, very exciting. Exactly. Like the people in UK, they drive on the wrong side of the road. What's going oh, on? Oh, you want to you wanna fight? I didn't realize we were going to fight today. <laughs> I've talked to so many people that are like, no, you guys drive on the wrong side of the road. I'm like, um, excuse me, but this is how I was raised. You're like, everybody else drives on the right side of the road. You're the only ones that choose to drive on the wrong side. I'm like, yeah, well, you know what? This is America and we do America things. That's the thing though, right? Like, I, that's kind of why I love America so much. It's, it's sort of like you, you, you're like, all right, we're, we used to be a colony of the UK, what we're going to do instead of, you know, abiding by everything of the UK, we're going to do it different. We're going to do our own style. We're going to be unique as hell. And I love that. I've always found that amazing about Americans. I always find what's crazy about America is the concept that we take the hard route for everything when we could just easily say <laughs> kilometers, we choose to go miles and we're like the only people that use miles. So someone's like, it's about 800 kilometers. You're like, well, what the what fuck is that? Is that? <laughs> Yeah, no, I know your feelings. I know your feelings. I mean, the UK actually uses miles as well. Well, to be fair, we sort of, um, sh you know, shift and shimmy between the two, but it's mostly in miles. Uh, I used to live in South Africa and we used kilometers over there. So coming over to this country and using miles really, really threw me. I can imagine that's the same for, for your cousins and neighbors to the north and neighbors to the south, really. Why did you, you live in South Africa? Yeah, so basically, I was I was born in South Africa, and I lived there for for about five or five or so years, and then uh, unfortunately, both of my parents were hijacked um, at gunpoint. So we moved over to the UK for a little bit, and uh, yeah, it was really good. I lived as a kid here, and then uh, we both my parents were were kind of you know depressed with the weather and everything, so they made the decision to move back, and I was about ten when we moved back to South Africa. Uh, because my dad's from originally from South Africa and my mom, mom moved there when she was a kid and they both love it. I mean, it is one of the most beautiful countries on the planet. And uh, I graduated law school at the end of 2016 and uh, we, we kind of made the conscious decision to, to come back to, 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 to the UK. So, yeah. I mean, have you ever been to South Africa? Have you been, ever been to the UK? I've, I've never been anywhere out of America, sadly. The only experiences I've had has been through podcasting with people from those areas and they talk right. about how wonderful it is there and it's like hold on a second i'm hearing all this crazy stuff like africa has starving children everywhere and they're like <laughs> it's it's not like how you would think it is there's a lot of areas where it's not like that at all and it's like what you just see in the news in the media with sarah mclaughlin fucking talking about dogs and <laughs> donate to save a dog you'll donate to save a dog but you won't donate to save a starving child <laughs> Yeah, yeah. I think you know, po poverty is rife everywhere. Unfortunately, sort of Africa has has quite bad poverty. But you know, I think a lot of people, um, like, like you see the media, and and I think movies are quite bad for it as well in that respect, um, because they paint this picture of sort of Lion King's Africa, where it's these vast swaths and vast plains of nothingness in like a single. Saharan tree sitting out in the distance. Um, weirdly enough, I think films like The Avengers, uh, Age of Ultron, do a lot of good for, for South Africa. Uh, same with things like District 9 and Chappie. 
uh, because that's a true, well, almost true representation of South Africa. I mean, we don't have hulks coming in and smashing buildings every like 10 minutes. Yeah, you just got to look uh, past all the blood and gore and then you get down to the actual land. It's like, there you go. Because like they're chappy, they're showing like this robot getting the shit beat out of them half the time. And then it's like, <laughs> it's hard to like look past that and be like, well, you know, that is a nice view. They do have a nice <laughs> view in the background. <laughs> Yeah, I've talked to people from Australia and I'm like, so tell me, like, I always start off like, so tell me why can everything in Australia kill you? And they're like, it's not like that, mate. I'm like, what do you mean? It's not like that. And they're like, there's not that big of a thing. Like there is some stuff that can kill you, but it's like the same thing. Like I'm more scared for you because you deal with a lot of grizzly bears. I'm like, oh shit, I get how it is now. In Australia, <laughs> you guys see Americans as like, and we go out of our house and a fucking bear comes out and kills us immediately. And then in, Aus- in, like, in America, we think in Australia that you could just randomly get punched by a kangaroo every five seconds. Right, yeah, no, I totally, I, I totally get where you're coming from with that. I mean, it, it genuinely terrifies me, the idea of Australia. And, you know, I shouldn't, have, being, being South African, I, I should sort of, shouldn't have that prejudicial stance, that sort of assumptive stance from the beginning, knowing how people see Africa, but you just do because that's what you're told is out there. So America, it's uh, America. It's sort of, you know, you've got the wild West kind of thing, guns everywhere, just shooting, you know, just people just, you know, in car chases and gunfights. And then in Australia, everything wants to kill you. You wake up next to a giant spider twice your size, South Africa, it's wide plains and we all take lions to, to, to school with us. And, uh, and, you know, the English, we just drink tea all day and, and discuss politics. Yeah, and whenever we use the word proper, we always think of an English accent to do that. Uh, that's, <laughs> I think that's quite funny, especially because, you know, the English, the English accent is rather uh, not so proper anymore. No one, no one speaks yeah, it's you know, actually Queen's English. Very blunt, to be honest with you. You guys curse a lot, and I like that. Oh, yeah. I only, I only like that on the concept of they just do it just like they just do it and say it and don't even think twice about it. And I'm like, I do that too on the concept of like, it's a minor stress relief. Like, yeah, no, definitely. You don't think about it, but like, it's like you're just randomly like something happens. You're like, shit. Like, but then someone like here in America will be like, are you angry? Are you upset? Are you, I get so many people that say that to me. I'm like, what? Like, but like you're cursing, I'm like, oh, I'm sorry, I didn't have milk for my raisin brand, so I got a little upset and said, shit, I'm sorry. Yeah, no, it's it, you're so right, and I think like it, it's almost like a catch twenty two in that respect. I mean, we give words power, so you know, words like shit and fuck and things like we say, oh, don't say them in front of kids, but that's because we give them that power. But then again, if we didn't give them that power, they wouldn't have that potency when we do forget the milk for our raisin brand that we can go, ah, shit. I yeah, mean, I couldn't enjoy my two scoops, so I'm going to say shit. That's a bad moment. Yeah. When I wake up in the morning yeah. and I can't have my two scoops with the sun smiling at me because I'm out of milk, I'm going to be upset. I'm not pouring water on it like some savage. I did that through my years. <laughs> I don't need to anymore. Wow, that could not have tasted good. Dude, I've had to grow up with like doing in creative ways with cereal and creative ways to make breakfast, mostly because I'm a savage. And when you're playing <laughs> video games 24 seven, when you run downstairs, you just grab a loaf of bread and just start throwing peanut butter on top of it and just carry it upstairs. So like you didn't make a sandwich. I was like, I made a whole damn loaf. Hey, that's cool. That's innovation in my mind. You're the next Steve Jobs, my man. Um, so what's the weirdest thing you've ever eaten for breakfast? Oh, dude. Oh, man. That's a tough question. You know what? I'm not going to lie. Uh, I pr- pretty much had like a peanut butter and fluff sandwich without like any jelly. But it was like... What is fluff? We don't get fluff over here in the United Kingdom. It's it's like if you picture the white fluffy stuff on a bunny's tail. Oh, right. Is it sort of like cotton candy or... No, it's like marshmallow, but like <gasps> the thickest amount of marshmallow in a jar like you know how you, all right first of all if you have the peanut butter and the jelly in one jar mm-hmm. like the double-sided goober stuff you're a savage you're disgusting <laughs> uh, we don't even sell it in this country we've got an import embargo against it we refuse 
it's weird. The whole factor is like you can put peanut butter on one slice of bread and jelly on the other slice, and then they can combine together. Mm. But if you have them in the same jar, you're just not right in the head. No. Yeah, you, know, you don't want to be the guy that sticks the jelly knife inside the peanut butter can, like, because then you're getting it all mixed together, even though it goes in the same place anyway. Yeah, no, but there's there's certain rules and predicate that you have to abide by, and if you're having this assumption that you're going to pre-mix them, you are the next Ted Bundy. There's no question about we it. We have laws in society for a reason. It's so people don't go exactly. crazy with these things. So now, uh, peanut butter and fluff sandwich. I wasn't a big fan of jelly, and then mm-hmm. Doritos. Oh, okay, that's a. Uh... I'm I'm just I'm I'm just uh, painting a color palette for myself here. Like crushing it up, it's really weird because mm-hmm. you get like on it on the sandwich, it's like really gummy, like so it's like a gummy marshmallow type sandwich mm-hmm. with the peanut butter mixed, and then you have like these little bits of crunch to it, which are really like appetizing. Right. Yeah, I could kind of get behind that. I think you know, I think I might have that for breakfast this morning. I'll see what I can what I can scrounge up. What's your craziest breakfast solution? Um, I have. A- Sometimes, not often. Uh, I sometimes have curry in the morning. If uh, if I made just a bit, setting yourself out for diarrhea all day. That's you know. Sometimes you just need a detox. Uh, <laughs> right so in like, the freaking morning too. Yeah, I don't. I like. I've, I've, I'm. I'm a big proponent that sort of. You know, there shouldn't be. You know. Well, I do agree with you in terms of the peanut butter, uh, peanut butter jelly uh, split. I don't abide by these rules that you can't have certain foods for breakfast and things if you want a curry if you want pasta in the morning you go for it you don't don't abide by what society says in that respect breakfast can be lunch dinner can be breakfast you don't have to have to listen to what the what the naysayers say yeah, so like if i make well mcdonald's yeah, does the best 24 hour breakfast oh i've got to tell you something that's going to break your heart we don't do that here in this country it doesn't break my heart. That just proves America's better. <laughs> yeah. No, no question about it. No question about it. I got to this country because South Africa does the same thing. They do 24 hour breakfast, but also do the lunches and whatever, like the main menu in the morning as well. So there was nothing better in South Africa on uh, January 1st when you're hanging the other side of your butt and you head over to McDonald's for a, for a Big Mac or a quarter pounder it at, six in the morning because everyone's still awake and and there's nothing better than that but then i came to this country and all i wanted was just a double cheeseburger at about 10 in the morning that's all i wanted and i got there and i'm like can i have a double cheeseburger and they go i'm oh, sorry sir we don't do that until 12 p.m and i was like how fucking dare you how you sat you know what's crazy is the concept of when they started doing all day breakfast they gave people an excuse to just be lazy as shit Mm -hmm. like you used to go at like 11 o'clock for to go to mcdonald's or something can i get an egg mcmuffin we stopped serving breakfast at 11 you're like what so you had (laughs) had to get there early you had to get there before 11 bill burr talks about this one of his bits he goes your Uh mother won't make you pancakes at fucking um what, one o'clock in the afternoon so why the hell should we and i was like that's all <laughs> true because it makes a whole laziness factor for america i get that i do i do understand where they're coming from with that but also you know you 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 go to mcdonald's for the convenience you you want that you know if you're if you're feeling like an egg mcmuffin at at you know 6 a.m uh, well at uh one in the afternoon because they are just so delicious you don't want to be you don't want to be told no i think if you want anything at two o'clock in the morning it's probably a mick griddle smothered in syrup i don't know what that is you see yet another reason why america is better than the uk we don't get half the menu you do it's basically like pancake but with sausage mm-hmm. in it. and then they just put it on a sandwich and then they just put dump syrup all over it oh Oh, that's really good. It's like pure, just like intoxication of the mouth. Like so many things going on at once that probably shouldn't be crossed together. Yeah. yeah. You don't feel good afterwards, but I mean, it's good when it goes (laughs) in, I guess. Do you not feel good sort of emotionally or physically or both? I think it's more of an emotional factor. (laughs) Like it's like trying to buy a salad at a fast food restaurant. Like even the guys making it for you, kind of pulling it out. They're like, why 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 yeah. 
Like you could easily yeah. go to the store and get this yourself. You want a head of lettuce, eat a head of lettuce. Yeah, but don't don't come here with that kind of negativity. That's insane. Yeah, you're creating don't, a yeah. bad look on us. Yeah, exactly. Why? Like when they re- when they released the 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 salad option, I thought it was a bit a bit weird and a bit off brand. Um, yeah, I thought that was strange. And like, there's been a big push in the UK for like Happy Meals to come with carrots instead of uh instead of chips instead of uh, yeah chips french fries and i just I, I, I mean you're not taking your kid to mcdonald's for them to be healthy you're like that's that's not what the point is who the fuck's feeding them carrots you guys don't feed them apples we do apple slices as well but carrots is real is the real big push wow man they're trying to make sure your sight's really good because all that weather down there you got to make sure you see where you're going plus you're driving on the wrong side of the road it's already a dangerous thing all right. Oh, all right. <laughs> <laughs> I'm willing to dog on the UK as much as the next person, but don't insult the way we drive just because you decided to say fuck you to the rest of the world. <laughs> we wanted to be the outliers here. Now, I want to talk to you a little bit about what you do professionally. We just took a giant tangent, which I love. So yeah, let's, let's try and stick to what do you do professionally? Right. So I've got, I've got my main job. So I am a partner acquisition specialist. So I work for a company called move GB and uh, they, what they do basically is they offer a variety membership for gyms and fitness. So uh, you pay us and then you're able to go to sort of like 12 sessions a month of different activities. So if you wanted to like go spinning on a Monday and then rock climbing on a Wednesday and then yoga on a Friday, you can. So, you know, it sort of alleviates this problem of just sticking with one gym. You can go and be fit and do different sort of mediums of exercise. What do you, and then my, wait, hold on. What do you believe on the concept of, um, wait, you said, what was the job specialty again? That was a long name partner acquisition specialist and does that work with multiple companies or does it just stick primarily in the fitness aspect mostly the fitness aspect but we do have we do have some weird and wonderful stuff on there like we've got on the platform we've got um crazy golf uh, in a couple places we've got uh, some like goat yoga and that kind of thing but it's it's mainly within the fitness industry now is this fitness a fascination in your life yeah, I, I'm, I'm very, uh, I'm, I'm a very fit person in that respect. I love to keep active. Uh, you know, I've done, I've, I'm, I'm a second degree black belt in Taekwondo. I'm an aqua aerobics instructor. I'm a body conditioning instructor. I'm a personal trainer. Um, I'm, I'm very much into my fit life. For me, uh, I've joined the gym and I've been going every single day. I have not missed a day, mostly because it's more oh, of fantastic. like a, it's a mental health issue. Kind of, I was bullied through school, so I kind of right. developed like this body dysmorphia type thing, mm-hmm. which I've been learning to overcome. But not to stick on the basis of like poor me or anything, but it's mm. it's definitely changed my life. It's been more of a routine. There isn't a day I have not missed. I've been going every day for seven years now. Oh, congratulations. Um, That's amazing. It's definitely something I tell people, like, it's not a healthy way of taking it, at least the road I kind of do it down, but it's also a major stress relief. Like, I literally block oh, yeah. two hours out of my day. Like, any nothing can interfere with that. Like, I'm like, this is my safe zone. This is my relaxation. I just put on headphones. I don't mm-hmm. bother anybody, and I just work out. And the stress relief you get from that, like you can go in there like, I freaking hate my life, or you know, it's a rough day. And I'm like, yeah, no, just go to the gym, because afterwards you're going to be too damn tired to bitch about your life. Absolutely. And it's just, like you say, it's, it's such a good sense of therapy as well. And I think, you know, it's it, depending on what you want, want out of it, it's just re- regardless of how, actually what you want out of it, you, you will – see progress you know and and you will either become stronger or fitter or whatever you want i mean i i sort of i I wasn't necessarily bullied in school like you were i was just sort of you know um uh, teased a little bit about it but it did have an effect on me as well in that respect i mean i was quite a chubby kid and uh so jim really helped me out it was it was always a place where i could be alone with my thoughts and just work on, on being a better person, being a better me. And I think it's such a, a wonderful revelation when, when you realize the power of exercise and, the, and, and 
just there's so there's so many benefits not like not just physical like you said the mental health aspect of it it's huge it also helps with critical thinking too i find if i'm mm-hmm. like thinking about something and i can't overcome a problem sometimes if i just work out like halfway through a workout i'll be like oh that's how i can do it amazing amazing do you prefer to gym in the evenings or in the mornings now this is crazy since i've been going every day for so long my time clock has changed multiple uh-huh. times I've gone from one o'clock in the morning to two o'clock in the morning, three o'clock. And it's literally done a full oh, wow. circle. Um, there was a point at one time, I think it was a couple of years ago. Um, I didn't have a job for winter and I was just like maybe a year out of high school. Um, mm-hmm. And so I was kind of like only doing summer jobs and during the winter I had no job. So I was going to the gym twice a day, every single day. Wow. And I got down to like 2% body fat, like bodybuilding status where, cause I mean, all you're doing is eating, sleeping, playing video games and working out. So it's like, yeah, your recovery time there is, you don't need recovery really because you're just mm-hmm. sleeping all day. So your body's already naturally ready to go. Um, yeah, exactly. It, 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 it was fun. It was cool. Um, but it was kind of boring cause it was like the only time I was ever going out and doing anything was if I was in right. the gym. But I mean, it's, I have from working out at different times, I've understand people a little bit more. There are two types of people out in this world. There are people <laughs> that function around everyday individuals. Um, mm-hmm. Mostly like, you know, they like, they can just walk around in society and connect with people around there. And there's people like me that choose to get up at like one or two o'clock in the morning and just be awake. Like the mail carriers, the people that deliver the newspapers, and mm-hmm. the ones that choose to be on the road while everyone else is asleep. Now, Mm-hmm. you encounter these people at the gym you encounter yeah. the guy that works out at three o'clock in the morning and you wonder why this person's in there two reasons one they're selling drugs <laughs> i've i've experienced those people or two they're really really smart and they cannot have a logical conversation with an everyday person mm-hmm i've yeah. met those guys like where i start talking to them i'm like wow you're really smart and they're like yeah and a lot of people don't understand and they just walk away. I'm like, you're a freaking Elon Musk. You can't get your yeah. words out there, but you, you have the brain smarts for it. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. And I mean, those are the people who you kind of want to surround yourself with really. If, if they're, if they're happy to permit you in, which is very rare because of, of sort of their personality type. But yeah, I think, you know, that I've got to agree with you sort of those early mornings are, are definitely best when you can just be alone. Um, you know, it's, it's, it's about being, I think, especially with Jim, it's about being alone with your sort of thoughts and sorting yourself out for the day ahead because you know we do all interact with a lot of people socially and i mean as podcasters you know i've heard you say it before you know you're not a people person and and to be fair a lot of the time i'm not either but being in the podcast world means that we have to run this social battery and boy oh boy does that social battery run out quick so i find gymming in the morning definitely helps reset that battery I, I, f- I find where I don't like people in a way is not the concept of the actual person. It's the concept of this person we construct walking around in the world today. We sense it's not a real person. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. We, we play a character. Like we're watching a TV show. Like you're watching the Brady Bunch and you hear the freaking sidetrack laughter or something. You're like, mm-hmm. what's going on? Like this isn't the real you. You're showing me an image of someone you want me to think is you. And then you find out more about that person and realize, oh, you're actually pretty hurt. You're actually going mm. through some stuff, but you're just putting on a smile and a fake face on the concept of you're afraid to show who you truly are. And mm. I try and tell people, like, if you're going to be real, I want you to be real around me. I don't want you being fake. I don't want you saying, how's your day and not truly care. Then don't bring it mm. up. You know what I mean? It doesn't, mm. it doesn't take much to be nice, but when you're showing fake niceness, it's not the correct way to be acting, I think. No, I've got to, I totally agree with you because you need to know who you're interacting with because, you know, especially, especially in, you know, this modern era when 
there's so much hidden behind closed doors, which is so problematic, you know, not to get, you know, into it and, and too political and things, but things like the Me Too movement have exposed how many sort of, you know, for lack of a, a less blunt term, rapists and rape apologists there are. And if, if you're going to be like that, I want to know up front so that I can just disregard you from my life. I don't need a secret asshole in my life just because you want to put on this front so we can be friends and socially interact every day. If you're an asshole, I need to know so that, you know, you're not around me anymore. That's how people should, you know, it's really weird how people open up themselves to conversations. Now they're like, hi, I'm Jim. I'm a Democrat. You're like, what? <laughs> that's fantastic. What did you just <laughs> say to me? Did you just tell me your political view after you introduced your name? I don't even know your last name. Are you just J- Jim Democrat? That is, that is a bold bold stance to take from Jim. People Good do that you. now because of the whole concept of how political controversies became such a thing to the, co- like the notion that you have to introduce your political party before you can affiliate a conversation with someone. I'm like, Shit. what are we doing? What's happening? <laughs> oh man, that's mental. I'm going to start introducing myself. Like, hi, my name's Robbie and I'm an acro yogist. You're like, what? Oh, tell, I, I would immediately be on that. I'd be like, oh, what's that about? Tell me more. I'm so very excited. I'm a ping pong yeah. champion from Scotland. Whoa. Yeah. Let's Whoa, talk about this. Me. Yeah. Yeah. No, damn. So, so yeah, back back from, from that tangent. So my job is essentially I'm the guy who uh, tries and gets um, different fitness activities on the system. So I phone up the uh, different yoga schools, different uh, gyms, that kind of thing. And I ask them if they want to be on the platform and try and convince them to be on the platform. I actually wanted to, uh, the main question I realized I kind of tampered off there. Uh, hey, I like a tangent. If you've oh. ever listened to our podcast, we love tangents. So about um, the religiousness with the gym. Uh, this mm. I want to get your side from this. A lot you said um, bringing them to other gyms as well, like seeing different. You know, you try a session here, try a session there. For some gym goers, there is a mental thing inside of their head that their gym is their home, their gym is their church mm. of metal. You know what I mean? For me, that's mm-hmm. how it kind of I see it. Um, I've been religiously going to my gym more on like the fact where like I won't dive out of it and at a point where like my gym's now the owner of it is now selling it so it's kind oh. of it's an impact into me because I yeah, here's this thing. thing that basically was like I, I wouldn't know how to interpret I guess for some like a kid to be structured off video games and then to find something else like it'd be like if someone took away something you've built yourself on you know what I mean and it's mm-hmm. like someone's Very literally attacking onto your turf. So I wanted to kind of get yeah, you. It's, it's, it's essentially like you, yeah. Like well, like you said, it's 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 a religion, and it's like someone saying to you, your church is being taken out from McDonald's. Like it's it's heartbreaking, and and you do feel that way. And what I would say to that is because I'm I'm the exact same. I love my gym, and and you know I recently moved, and finding a new gym is is really stressful because it's got to be the right place because you know you're going to be spending the majority of your life there. Um, but, but basically, what I would say is like move GB is more uh, what we're doing in terms of creating that variety is to. It's for it's for people who are getting into gym who are afraid of sort of that that idea of of an imposing gym, and they want to try out different things so that they uh, can can see what they enjoy. So they can do a spinning class if it's not for them. They can do it go do yoga. Yoga is not for them. They can go do these. That's not for them. They can go for swimming, and it's to to get them into exercise. What we are trying to do is create more fit people. It's not really for people like you and me who religiously go to a gym every single day. It's more for people who are either trying to get into gym, get back into gym, or find what they like in fitness. It's also to try and keep them going longer and longer. So we found that variety gives the the normal person, uh, not the the religious gym goer like us, than just an every every day everyday average person, the. Uh, the want to go to back to gym because they go, Oh, we'll spin on Monday. The people that want to make a change for their life and uh, feel afraid to do so. Now, what upsets you more in a gym environment? Does it the person that slams the weights or the person that's very inconsiderate into others? 
Oh, I think they're almost the same person, aren't they? Usually, yeah, I think, sure. I think, I think it's definitely the guy who slams the weight. It's, I've seen so many weights break because of it and then no one else can use it. And it's just such a showy move. There's no need for it. You know, like I do understand that if it's a particularly heavy weight, if you're, if you're sort of lifting towards 40 kg, I don't know what that is in pounds. Me um, and you are going to make a gym documentary because I need an English man's voice for it because that's every nature documentary <laughs> has an English man's voice. But yeah, someone made a gym, uh, there's a gym video and it's like uh, the people you encounter at a gym and it's like, I think I've seen that one. Yeah. Here we have the average baboon. The average baboon <laughs> likes to go yeah. on the bench press and take pictures and also beat their chest and scream. And I'm like, <laughs> I got a bunch of people wearing snapbacks and there's like, and yeah. there's the monster in the gym. No one encounters the dangerous gorilla of the gym. It's like this <laughs> one dude like putting chalk on his hands, lifting up a deadlift, yeah. and dropping like eight plates on the ground where it slams and everyone in the gym's like looking around like, what the hell just happened? Yeah. Yeah. Was there an earthquake? Yeah. No, absolutely. I mean, it's, it's, it's amazing those kind of people. And, you know, I think in a weird way, the gym sort of brings us back to our primal nature because everyone is sort of, it's, it's a show of strength, essentially what you are trying to do there, depending on what you are trying to do there. But the main, the majority of people there are just trying to, trying to increase their strength. And, and so it becomes an, a show of strength. And when there is a potential mate in the gym, you want to sort of, you know, uh, draw your attention, uh, draw their attention towards you. So you're going to like beat your chest and things. I'm not saying I do this, but you, you see this from those guys who do drop the weights and who do scream on every bench press because they're trying to show like, look at me, look how strong I am. I can provide for you kind of thing. Even though a lot of these, these women and, and, you know, sexual partners that do go to the gym can definitely take care of themselves. Hence why they're at the gym. Yeah, and I can understand their side from it too, because sometimes you're bench pressing or something, and you you let out a bit of like a kind of like ah, oh yeah, like a scream. It feels like yeah. it does help you in a way. What would you like? So, what times do you usually work out? I usually I usually hit the gym at about five thirty in the morning. Now that I'm working and constantly, it's like five thirty. I'll hit the gym. Uh, when I wasn't working or when I was working on rotation shifts, it was sort of whenever I'd wake up. So if I was working sort of a late shift and I had the morning off, I'd go at, you know, three in the morning or whatever I needed to do uh, just to just to get get the, the day started. I usually I prefer to wake up in gym straight away. Do you want to. All right. So you, do, you, do you normally eat anything before you go? You do like a whole fasting thing. I usually eat a banana and have a protein shake. Now, OK, do you go there? Is there a lot of people there? Or there's not a lot of people there. <sighs> Um, during summer, there is a lot of people there, you know how it is, but in the winter it's dead quiet and I prefer the dead quiet of winter. I mean, I don't like getting up at that time in morning, uh, in, of the morning in, in the winter cause it does get so blisteringly cold here. Yeah. yeah, but, you have to yeah. Start your car up and then wait inside the house for like 30 minutes or you just jump in the yeah. car like a savage when you have like a time <laughs> you get like set in your times. Like if it's like two 30 yeah. and you have to be at the gym at three o'clock, you just hop in the car and you just sit there and scream, fuck, fuck, fuck in the cold. And um, yeah. I, I find it like I was working out at two o'clock in the morning and I was bench pressing two plates, which I was doing my max and nobody was mm -hmm. in there mm -hmm. and I dropped it and it hit me in the oh. chest and it was oh, shit. one of those fuck me moments where I was like, I randomly got this surge of adrenaline to the point where I was able to tilt it to knock off two plates on one side and then have the other uh -huh. two plates flip over. And I was so pumped up with adrenaline. It was snowing out. I was the only one at the gym. <laughs> I just opened up the door, put the kickstand down on the door so it stayed open. And I ran and jogged around the gym because I was so pumped up from like almost That's dying. Awesome. I was like, yeah. But like that, that when that happened, I ripped my chest muscles to the point <sighs> where I came in eight hours later um, after like a good sleep and some food. Uh, mm -hmm. This was around the time I wasn't working during winter. And I came back in and I had my, my chest taped up, like had my shoulder, everything wrapped with boxing tape, all this type of stuff to help it kind of secured in place. And right. then I just started hitting chest again. Oh shit. That's amazing. That's what, that's well, nuts. that is dumb too. Cause my, the, one of my, oh, yeah. uh, one of my first podcasts that I did on uh, my fifth episode, his name's Chuck, uh, Gokenauer. 
and mm-hmm. he's a personal trainer, fitness guy. And he was talking about his fascination with um, bodybuilding and getting into the gym aspect was the whole realization of he used to draw comic books. Um, All right. Okay. Superheroes. And he got obsessed with the bodies of these godlike men. Oh, yeah. And he wanted yeah. to model himself after that. And a lot of what he talks about, he told me, he was like, you know, you don't need to be working out two to three hours every single day. You need to throw in a rest day every now and again. I'm like, my rest day is cardio and I burn 2000 something calories. And he's like, he goes, you obviously, you have something mentally that you're still kind of holding on to. And I, I was able to relate with him on a podcast and talk to him about Mm -hmm. it. And he goes, we all experience the type of body like bodybuilders have the biggest syndromes in the world all those guys that are super huge have really small oh, complexes definitely. when it comes to their looks you know they get yeah. religious about what they eat you know if you're not a gym nut or have a mental thing with it at least if you haven't been going for a while i'm pretty sure you carry any type of safety food in your car oh definitely definitely i think people think that bodybuilders and strongmen like that are like really hard guys who are just doing it to, to beef up and, you know, win competitions and be the strongest, but it comes from a place of insecurity. A lot of the time it's from being either like a weak kid who got bullied a lot or a fat kid who got bullied a lot. And you know, it's, people don't see that. They just see these strong men who are like much Joe and like King of the Hill kind of vibe. And it's, it's not that at all. And I think that is one of the biggest sort of secrets or biggest misconceptions of bodybuilding. And it's, it's fascinating. Also for the people that are driving out there and they hide or, and they like get mad at a car in front of them. That's really, really small. Be yeah. careful because half the time it's a bodybuilder inside that car Damn, that gets out straight. Dude, every bodybuilder that goes to my gym drives like a small ass like car. Like you would not expect them to fit in it like a smart car. No. And then you're like, this guy, all right, pull over. We're going to fight. They <laughs> pull over and then they get out of the car. You're like, the goddamn Incredible Hulk was in the smart yeah. car. Let's back it up. Back it up. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's the thing. All that money goes towards the gym and, and, and all of their protein shakes and stuff. And the- I wanted to ask you, what, is, uh, what are your thoughts on pre-workout? What do you mean pre-workout? Like the, the energy stuff? Yeah, the energy stuff with uh, beta alanine in it. I took it when I first started, and I don't take it on the concept of I have really bad ADHD. Right. So the most for a pre-workout I've ever put in um, when I first did it, it was 4,600 milligrams of caffeine in one drink, yeah, and I, now. I barely felt it. Oh, really? Wow. I, I barely even, like, I was up already all day, and I barely, like, I can drink a pot of coffee and go right to bed. Shit. Yeah, wow, caffeine, okay. caffeine has a weird impact. I took one pre-workout when I very first started, like, my first, mm-hmm. I think it was my, my second year to go on, and it was um by Bulk Supplements. It was called, like, Blue Labs or something. Right. It had way too much creatine in it and i drank it and i felt like i was getting dehydrated and i got really sick to my stomach right okay I, yeah like, I, to the point where like your mouth was just dry like you mm, had nothing in there and that's not really what you want when you go to gym like you know you, you don't want that sort of feeling of, of just feeling uncomfortable well, you want to be hydrated, but it's like you can't, yeah. you can't pick up a weight if you can't even like you can't even talk because your mouth feels like you just swallowed like cayenne pepper or something. <laughs> you, yeah, you're so what are right. Your, what are your thoughts on pre-workout? I love it, but it play, like I have to I have to take it in moderation. That's for sure. Uh, the first time I ever took it, oh man, I, I thought I was going to die. Like I was on the way to work afterwards and I had to really just like focus on my breathing. I mean, it was dead of winter, snowing outside and I had the, both windows open in the car just because I couldn't, I couldn't breathe like, and it was just too hot. But after I sort of calmed down from that experience, um, I just think, you know, it, it helps if you're feeling particularly fatigued. Uh, you know, it, it gives you that little bit of a boost, that little bit, you know, cause, cause sometimes, I mean, you, you, you'll know this as well is that you plateau and you need just something to give you that little bit of kick into, into your next sort of area of, of, you know, strength or fitness just to push you over that edge and over that plateau so that you can progress again. I think sure. it's really good for that, but I think it's definitely, I definitely think it's something in moderation because it can do havoc with your liver. It can do havoc with your kidneys. It can do havoc with your heart. Yeah. 
Yeah, there was a point where like I wasn't going to the bathroom for like six or seven days, only on the concept of the only food I was eating was protein shakes. So it was like it was all liquid. So there was like your body was like, we don't have anything to push out, bro. (laughs) So like, (laughs) yeah, there's no food at all in here. But then I discovered things like PB Fit. Um, the it's like Mm -hmm. pressed peanut butter. Um, or no pressed. Yeah, so they take all the fats out of it, so it's like a powdered peanut butter. You just mix okay. it with water, and um, it's actually really, really, really good. It's actually better than normal peanut butter because the weird thing wow. about it is um, the amount of water you put into it mm-hmm. makes it how thick it's going to be. So if you want a really thick one, you just put a little bit of water in this powdered peanut butter. That's really cool. Stir it up, and it's really thick. So I was mixing that with egg whites, and I was cooking the egg whites. Right. Okay. How did that taste? Because that, so that, that's an interesting butter, combination. It was peanut butter eggs. So that might yeah. be the weirdest breakfast food I've probably ever had. Yeah. Going to change your answer there. 50 grams of protein and only like 190 calories. Oh, what the fuck? That's amazing. It was something ridiculous of this sort. Like I was doing that. Like I mean, my protein content, I was consuming like 500 grams of protein when I was working out twice a day. And I was only like 130, dude. I was, Fuck. I was, oh man, 2% body fat lean as hell. I mean, I'm at around yeah. four or five now only on the concept of, I still like to have that occasional, like, you know, slice of pizza or something. Mm-hmm. I'm learning to incorporate more foods just cause I was religiously no, that's good. cans of tuna for so freaking long. <laughs> I think it's, yeah, no, that's good. I always tell people like I've, had so many people come up to me and tell me like you can just eat something it's not going to ruin your progress and it's like it took me a long time to understand that and nowadays I see Mm -hmm. people in the gym and this is the one thing that does upset me is when someone does judge someone at the gym and then like Mm -hmm. be a dick to them when they're trying to better their lives like I oh yeah I go out of my way if I see someone like trying to better their lives or hop on some equipment. I'm like, here, hop on it, dude. And they're like, really? I'm like, I'm going to be here for another hour and a half, man. You're probably going to be here another 30 minutes. So mm-hmm. I don't say that part only on the concept yeah. that's kind of mean. But I tell yeah. them like, yeah, go ahead. I'm going to be here another hour and a half. And I walk away. And then next thing you know, they gone, they're gone 10 minutes later because they can't work out that long. You know, 30-minute workout mm. for someone who's just starting is pretty hard. Um, yeah. But no, for absolutely. me, like I've I've gone so long that my body takes a while at least to get the full effects from the gym from a workout. So I'll have to be there mm-hmm. hitting it hard for like an hour and a half before I even feel anything. Yeah. And it's all about understanding and compassion. Too many people judge in the gym. And I'm like, look, we're Definitely. already judging ourselves constantly on the on the factor that there's a million mirrors around here. So like mm-hmm. when you when you go to a and gym, I think yeah, it goes it goes with the insecurity thing as well. Yeah, well, I I just wish people would tend to stop viewing others on the concept of like they we judge people off of how they look, we judge people on what mm. they have. I'm like, just worry about what you need to be doing. Exactly, you're there in the at the end of the day. You know, it's a, it's it's a sad fact, but you live alone and you die alone. And at the end of the day, when when your day's up, do you want to look back at your life and see how much you compared yourself to others, or do you need to go, do you want to look back in your life and compare yourself to how well you lived it? how well you use that time that you have on this planet. And I don't want to be found wanting. I want to say that I woke up every day and I gave it my max. And that's always started at the gym and helped other people sort of see their beauty as well. Because everyone, like you said at the beginning of the podcast, everyone is is interesting and everyone is unique. And there's so much beauty in this world from every single person in some shape or form. And if if you're not going to help someone realize that, if you're not going to realize that within yourself, then, then what's the point? So I'm going to play a little bit of leapfrog here. I'm going to leap for this. Is this how you started your podcast on, it's called Fresh Tomatoes Podcast on the concept of optimism with movies? Yeah. So basically it's, it's, it's kind of a weird backstory, but I used to run a website called Forge and Flint. And what we did there was we sort of promoted and found new and novice writers and we produced and published their work for them. So if they had never been published before and they were writing short stories or scripts or articles, we used to publish their work and sort of try and circulate it in the world. So they got, they got some recognition because, you know, in a, in a, in a society where sequels and and, you know, the same actors and, and writers are always being featured and no one new can really break in. 
you know, it's, it's really tough. And I, I hate that. I really think there's so much new talent that, you know, we need to be producing their stuff. And so my co-creator and now co-host, she, she messaged me one morning and she said, Hey, I want to write an article uh, called, you know, five movies that weren't actually that bad. And I was like, no, no, don't do that. Let's start a podcast and do that every week. And so we started our first podcast, which was called It's Not That Bad, which is the same concept. It's optimistic movies. And uh, then we got picked up by a network. And so we sort of um, refreshed it, rebranded and sort of uh, honed in and, and made the, the whole concept more, more coherent and more flushed. And it was from that basis. It's basically, you know, we people worked really hard on these films and though they weren't great there's there's still something good about them and and you know everyone has an opinion on bad movies and so so you know you've got to you've got to find the good in the bad so what is one of the movies that you found that you've kind of thought back on and kind of seen like it's not that bad like what's one of the top movies Whew, that's a that's a really tough question um but yeah one that one that i thought wasn't that bad that everyone hated was i would say the one that really sticks out in my mind is horns with daniel radcliffe that is a great fucking movie thank you didn't do well critically got like 40 36 percent on on rotten tomatoes i don't know what's wrong with people they're philistines i think the whole concept like that was an amazing thing the fact that he was randomly growing horns and showing the true mm -hmm. side of people like that's on netflix i just watched that not even last night so it's like amazing that would it technically be eight hours ago but um i mean <laughs> the whole concept like that's a great movie man it shows like the realest parts like that you know it's the same concept everyone as a kid wanted to have superpowers and some adults mm -hmm. wanted to have superpowers is the concept of mind reading. But I tell people, if you could read people's minds, you wouldn't want that power. Oh, okay. definitely. It would turn into the movie with Mel Gibson, what woman want, you know what I mean? Yeah. You're, you're, yeah. you're hearing everybody's thoughts and it's too much all the time. You're going to hear the true intentions of people and you're going to be like, Hey man, how's it going? Oh, Hey John, what's up? And then all you hear is the John, uh, the one dude's thoughts go, that guy's a fucking asshole. You're like, what? Yep. What'd you say, John? Uh, nothing, man. What are you talking about? And there's nothing you can do about it because it's all in their head. What is one movie that you looked at which does kind of like a little bit like, eh, it does kind of suck though? It's got to be Lucy with Scarlett Johansson. That movie is absolute garbage. Can't stand it. Yeah, that movie was a tough one to follow. Yeah, it's just scientifically incorrect. It's just all over the place and it's so gosh darn long there's just no need for it <laughs> what movies yeah so one movie i think this is what you're probably going to ask me mm. one movie i find to be really really good only on the concept of they don't have a movie for this superhero mm. and and have like kind of taken anything seriousness into his character green lancer with ryan reynolds you know i actively avoided that film so I can't, I can't give you an opinion on it, but it, it, it didn't do well at all. Everyone sort of slated it. Ryan Reynolds even talked yeah. shit on it. Yeah. But you know what? I am a giant Green Lantern fan, and nobody right. has ever made a Green Lantern movie. No. So when that movie came out, love it or hate it, I had to see it. And I thought it was pretty well done when it came to the Green Lantern story. Um, right. But there was a lot of stuff where it was like, all right, come on, guys. Like, do the character a little bit more justice in a way. <laughs> you know, the suit right. was okay, but like CGI, come on, don't make it animated. Yeah, that's the, that's the problem. You know, people think, oh, we'll, we'll just animate it and it will look amazing. And, uh, you know, we'll, we, be, no, nothing can be better than this animation now that we have. And it always gets updated so, so quickly just because of the, the technological progress. But, you know, you gotta, you got to love Ryan Reynolds. He's such a fantastic actor. And, you know, Green Lantern came out at sort of the, the, the pinnacle, the pioneering time of, of superhero movies so they were still trying to figure out what's good and what's bad you know we still even after that we got two terrible amazing spider-man movies and that's gosh done that that's spider-man which spider-man Spider one of which, the biggest spider-mans with uh andrew garfield 
Oh, okay, yeah. And Tom Holland. I don't like him that much. Do you know? I'm, I just I, someone called me Tom Holland, and I was like, "Are you trying to hurt me?" <laughs> Some guest at my hotel randomly gave me a compliment. Was like, "Man, you're like a young Tom Holland." I'm like, "Why would you do that? Why would you, <laughs> I just fucking help you carry luggage up three flights of stairs?" Like, what, what? what is it about Tom I, Holland that you don't like? Ah, dude, he seems, he seems so much like he's fake in a way. Like every time right. he's on air, he seems way too nice. And I know it's an English thing, but I'm like, nobody's that. You know what I mean? He seems like mm-hmm. he's like what Justin Bieber was for women or for girls when they were young. You know, he was like, right. I'm going to be there forever for you. And then you find out later he's like crashing cars pissing in Mm -hmm. buckets and stuff i'm like that's tom holland he's got a dark side to him he puts up photos Mm -hmm. of his dog i'm like he probably doesn't even own that dog (laughs) or is it from the spca i need to take some pictures for uh, social media real quick (laughs) right okay hot take i think you you're the only person on the planet who doesn't like uh, tom holland yeah my buddy's a giant spider-man freak he's like dude i got us Uh our far from home tickets i'm like i'm not going He's like, I'm not going. I'm like, I'm not watching Tom Holland. He's like, dude, I'll pa- I bought your ticket. I'm paying for you. I'm going to pick you up and I'm going to wine you and dine you and take you to this movie. I'm like, I don't give a shit. If you buy me a lobster dinner, I'm not sitting down and watching Tom Holland unless he's with other Avengers. Damn. Damn. Toby Maguire's wow. my Spider-Man. You can't change that. You can't. Look, I've, I mean, Toby Maguire brought something to the role that no one else can. And it was at a, it was a beautiful time. I think, you know, I love those, uh, those three Spider-Man films because yeah, people talk crap on the third one. And those people can, can realize that they're doing the movie injustice because the third one was awesome. The third one is, the third one is, is intense. We've done it for the podcast as well. They, you they know, did it, not it has its rights. Well. They did they not had its faults, but do it right when it came to Venom. Venom, yeah. they turned him into this scrawny dude. Venom's supposed to be like a giant mm. jock. Now, the Venom yeah. movie, that was Yeah, bad. I enjoyed that. I thought that, that that people did, like, people were very unfair to that film. You know, I think people have this weird thing against Sony doing films, but I thought it was a pretty decent film. Well, sadly now, like, we're not seeing any more independent films really happen anymore. Mm-hmm. You know, there was weird things that you would randomly, like, be in a theater. And you'd be like, I haven't even seen a trailer for that at all. I haven't seen an advertisement for it. I'm like, I want to kind of mm-hmm. watch this. One movie that was really, really good, Ghost Rider. The first one? Yeah, yeah. Blew my greed mind, dude. I'm not a giant Nicolas Cage fan, but, yeah, that was, like, a moment. That was a good movie. Just seeing Nicolas Cage as any kind of superhero is kind of the world that I want to live in. Because, yeah, like, we did, we've done, we've done Ghost Rider, and then we also did a Nicolas Cage episode on the podcast. Because that guy is an enigma wrapped in a mystery. You know, is he a good actor? Is he a bad actor? Is he good at being bad? Is he bad at being good? Is he a yeah. bad... He just like he's just fucking movies, all of the things. All his movies nowadays are based on the <clears> same <throat> thing. It's like watching an Adam mm. Sandler movie. It's the same freaking mm. thing over and over again. Yeah, you know, he doesn't dive out of his character realm that way. Like, I think there's like 50 movies on Netflix that you can look up with Nicolas Cage, and they're all yeah. in the concept. Someone stole his kid, someone stole his wife, someone did this, mm-hmm. someone did that. It's like, what's happening? It's the same basis. You're just changing the title and giving it a different plot. I think what obviously happened to him is, you know, he was he was saying yes to any movie script that came across his desk, and then his 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 uh, his agent was probably just like, "Listen, Nick, you can't be doing this anymore. We need to just stick to what you're good at because because people are talking, man." <laughs> That's the same concept for Johnny Depp in Pirates of the Caribbean. We're gonna see him in Pirates of the Caribbean forty seven only on the concept of he keeps buying homes. Oh, that dude is insane. I don't know why we keep giving him money. He's he has- a mess. 46 houses and like why why you can only live in one of them at a time he doesn't even rent them out he just keeps buying them his advisor his managers like johnny stop buying homes you're don't have all the money to buy these million dollar homes and just have them sitting there and he's like eh. and then he goes and buys another house and they're like what the hell no that dude that dude is a problem he needs to just chill He's got, he, he needs to sort himself out, really. Now, do you think what makes a movie is the basis of its production or the basis of its characters that play in the movie? 
That is a really tough question. I think, I think it's a culmination. I think, first of all, I don't think money has anything to do with it. So let's just put that to bed straight away. You can have the crappiest budget on the planet of like $100 and it will still be an exceptional movie so long as the script is good, so long as the actors are good, so long as the production is good and so long as you have a decent director. It is the... There, there is no one thing that will make a movie good. It's definitely a culmination of different aspects. Because if you have a shite director, you're going to have actors who are without direction. If you have a shite producer, you're going to have a real lack of, you know, sort of a, a work, a, a lack of a good working environment. If you have crappy actors, you're not going to reflect the script well. And if you have a shitty script, you're not going to have actors being able to portray the message that you wanted so it's definitely not one thing i think it's definitely a culmination of all the aspects when it comes to the movie now what is one movie that you've seen that really seemed like it stemmed around the actor because i can tell you one in particular is my favorite only on the concept of how far that actor goes with every single film he has ever been in Mm, I'm very excited to see what you say. For me, it's uh, a split uh, with uh, James McAvoy. What, what was, what's yours thinking? I like Christian Bale. Right, yeah. I, I mean, look, dude, dude has some problems. He uses, he uses, he, um, I, th- I think it's the Meisner technique where he just, he um, becomes the role and he, he doesn't break character. Johnny Depp does that. Or not Johnny Depp. Um, Jim Carrey does that too. Yeah, and and I mean, both of those gentlemen really take it to the extreme. But he is a spectacular actor. I agree with you. What film were you thinking of for him? Okay, he went from The Machinist. Mm-hmm. Okay, I don't know if you've ever seen that movie. Yeah, yeah, I have. He was like, like down. He was he was a nothing. He, he yeah, just went under exit. Holocaust survivor status. Yeah. Then he bulks up not even six months later to play Batman Begins, weighing in at 200-something pounds, um, to the point where they were making him work out on set to lose weight, then dropping back down (laughs) to 175 to play American Psycho, and then hopping back up like in his other films to play the normal Batman, and then doing Mm. Dick Cheney. Yeah, an like American he, hustle. Yeah, he put like, his body through legit hell and didn't give yeah. a shit. That would for someone that in, like understands the peak of how hard it is to get into a shape and also care about your body to a religious standard. That mm-hmm. is difficult for me to conceptualize of how impactful that must be on your psyche. Yeah. No. Absolutely. And I, it's it's a strange. Uh, it's it's dedication bordering on obsession and you know he's he's a fantastic actor with or without his body changes but it's his willingness to do that which is insanity and i think you know what do you think it's a good thing because i don't necessarily think it's a good thing i don't think it's a good thing to put your body through that and have that type of thing but Mm. i can see the passionate drive where people get upset like they hear about christian bale screaming at some guy on set for not having something at the props table or something like he screams at the director calling him a lazy piece of crap because something wasn't produced properly. And I'm like, you got to understand it from his side. He puts his body through hell and his mind through hell. Why can't people do the same amount of effort Mm -hmm. he's putting in for his movies? Yeah, no, it's, it's, it's a tough, it's a tough uh, line to walk because it's sort of, you know, there's no, there's no reason to just lose your shit at someone. But when, you are doing you when you are putting your body through that kind of hell and you have such a dedication to the profession that you give you don't have a concept of anyone giving less than that you physically cannot like you said you can't conceptualize putting your body through that he can't conceptualize someone not doing their utmost for their for their profession so if a if a a lighting ad or a best boy or, or, or a key grip doesn't do what they're supposed to do. He, he f- mentally cannot understand why you, they're, they're not in the right place at the right time. So it does get frustrating for him. But then again, there is no actual good reason to scream at someone for that as well. So it's sort of, yeah, that weird balance of, of being a nice, being a decent human being to other human beings because we have to live together and 
doing your profession at his kind of level. What are the types of things you've learned in your podcast, um, at least by doing like the optimistic side of movie reviews? Because anytime anybody writes a review about something, they're usually just bitching about it because nobody really takes mm -hmm. the time to write a good review out. Oh yeah, definitely. Definitely. That's something I've noticed is that people are very, very quick to, to shit on something, but it takes them absolutely ages to, to say something nice. Um, what I've learned from this podcast is that everyone has an opinion on bad movies. Everyone loves bad movies. There's not a single person that you speak to when you go, Oh, I run a, a podcast that talks about bad movies. Everyone has a suggestion. Everyone has something that they're dying to talk about. And you know, it's sort of like true crime in that way. If you meet someone else who loves true crime, you can speak about it for, for years. And movies are such an important thing in everyone's life now just because they're so uh, widely spread that you, you, you can't ignore them. And, and bad ones in particular really take a special place in your heart because you never forget them. You'll always forget a good movie after a while and you'll go back and you'll be like, oh yeah, that movie was pretty good. But a bad one, you'll never stop talking about and you'll never forget why it was so bad. I think it's also shown me the difficulties in being optimistic about things and in that respect, trying to bring that into my normal life and stop being negative and stop putting people down and stop uh, even just negatizing your own day. It's, it's important to find the good in things and, you know, like, like I said earlier, you know, you've got such little time on this planet. Why would you fill it with negative things when you need, well, not need to, but you, you should fill it with good things, whatever that good thing is for you. So long as it doesn't hurt anyone. We, I think it's about not only taking an optimistic side in the movies, but taking an optimistic side into life, you know, just because you don't like something, maybe you might be looking at it the wrong way. But also if you don't like something, you probably shouldn't be going around just shitting on it. If someone else enjoys it, cause it's probably someone else's favorite movie. Exactly. You're so right. You know, it's, it's that old saying of one man's treasure is another man's trash. And, you know, just because you didn't like it doesn't mean that someone else isn't going to like it. And just, you know, you might, might not see what they see in it. It may speak to them because of their past experience and, you know, like good on them. Fair enough. And, and yeah, you know, someone worked hard on that. That's, that's what we always come back to at the end of the day <clears throat> is that someone did work hard on this thing and we need to appreciate the effort that they put into it. Well, you know what, Chad? It's been awesome chatting for you, with you, man. And I really appreciate you doing the podcast, dude. It was awesome talking to you. No, fantastic. Thank you so much. It's been an absolute pleasure. And, and thank you again for, for getting, getting yourself out of bed at 1 a.m. to do this. I really appreciate it. I did it for you. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. I, I will carry that with me for the rest of my life. It will be <laughs> with a burden and a, and a piece of joy for me. It's going to be like a good movie. It's only going to last 10 minutes in your head. Then you're going to... <laughs> Well, I want to give you here a minute at the end to be able to plug your podcast and where people can find your awesome content, man. Yeah, no, of course. Thank you so much. So basically you can find us on Instagram at fresh tomatoes podcast. You can find us on Twitter at fresh tomatoes MP for movie podcast. And you can find us on Facebook under fresh tomatoes podcast as well. If you want to write us in an email, it's fresh tomatoes podcast at gmail.com. And uh, yeah, come and tell us your, your favorite movies as well. Uh, we would love to hear from you guys and to get your opinions on it. Is there a movie you would like to see on our podcast, Robbie? Oh, yeah. Green Lantern, please. Green Lantern. All right. We'll do another superhero episode soon and we'll do Green Lantern just for you. you. Guys we'll did, shout you out. You guys did Aquaman. and That's correct. You don't even need to. Anybody that shits on that movie just missed the whole aspect of they weren't enjoying Jason Momoa with his shirt off. I'm just saying. Right. I'm a guy, <laughs> I know when people go physically, like when Ryan Reynolds, he's in peak physical, physical performance, people are like, you might be gay. I'm like, no, I no. know how hard it takes to get a body like that. And I can understand where someone goes. And that's a true person that goes that far to do that. Damn straight. Couldn't agree with you more. And you need to show that person respect. Well, if you guys ever need a guest, hit me up. I'm more than happy to wake up this early again, if this is when the time you guys record. Oh, definitely. Definitely. It would be so much fun. Yeah. I'd love to have you on as a guest. We'll, we'll definitely uh, speak about that and see what we can do about getting you on as soon as possible. Well, thanks for being on the podcast again, Chad.